Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Duke's Models, and this is the Flank Off. <laughs> I've been debating where to take this build review next, and there are a couple different routes that we can go. There's the install the little bullshit, you know, the various antennas and scoops and things like that that need to go on to the actual airframe. There is playing with hard points and ordnance, and there's installing the rest of the big shit, like the engine, exhausts, the nose, things like that. And I was originally leaning towards doing the little bullshit, but in the process of cleaning up these tail joins, I managed to knock off the static dischargers on the Great Wall Kit, or at least enough of them to where I said, fuck it, and cut the others off. And I'm just gonna be drilling them out and replacing the, uh, the plastic little bits with wire. But that whole destruction of fine detail basically turned me around to deciding for this installment, let's focus on essentially the front and rear of the aircraft, so the nose and the engines. Now at an earlier point in the build, I'd been opining that maybe, just maybe, this Great Wall kit was the best jet ever kitted in 148 scale. But that has not quite borne out. It is still a very good kit, but if you compare it to the, you know, for example, the Tamiya F-14 Tomcat, well, yes, the Tomcat does lack some details in the gear bays and up in the cockpit area. Where it counts, it fits wonderfully. And the same cannot be said for all the different areas of this kit. For example, the tails were more of a pain in the ass than they really should have been, given the high level of engineering and fit that the rest of the kit has displayed. Another place where that is a bit dicey is in the engines. Now, ideally, these would be nice, clean, drop-fit things, and they are mostly, but not entirely, because when you take the engines, which here we've got them all assembled finally and weathered and painted on the inside, when you take the engines and put them in here, at first, you know, there's still a tiny, tiny little step out here that I just don't see going away. Um, because I've already gotten to the point where I've shaved down the inside wall here, you know, to the, like, any further, and it's going to start looking really fucked up. And honestly, I don't know if, you know, even if I were to go in here and fully hollow that out, I still don't know if this boom wasn't even a thing that was in the way, if I could get these to exactly fit around that curvature. So that's a problem, and that is a problem that the Tamiya F-14 does not have, because those exhausts you can totally drop on, and everything is nice and happy. Up here with the nose, things are pretty damn good. It's got, you know, a little, a little keyed notch there, and that fits... Come on, you were so easy a moment ago. That fits right in there like that, and voila. You know, it's about as good as you're going to get for a nose. So, hooray on that front. But these, this whole aft area uh, leaves a bit to be desired with this kit, and I think that holds it back from that title of best ever. However, this is still a damn good kit, and if this is its failing, I'll live with it. So, we're going to go ahead and glue these bastards in place. And to do this, I'm going to put my faith in my favorite cement, MEK, methyl ethyl ketone. Now, the, the biggest challenge with this whole thing is it takes two hands to basically hold the kit and hold the part in place because, you know, you need to exert some pressure on it. And then it's a matter of how do you do that and apply cement. So I'm going to hope that I can just get this thing to hold in here long enough for me to let the glue do its thing. Now 
Now another fun thing about these uh, exhausts, which I will touch on in a minute, is the way that that sort of ball joint works slash does not work. All right, that's one of them on. And once the shit sets up, we can come in here and clean that up a little bit. All right, the next one. Similar issue where it mostly fits well, but not entirely. Fingerprint down there. Be fun to buff that fucker out. All right. Again, all that's going to take a little bit of sanding to clean up. So, a quick word about the ball join system for the exhaust on the Great Wall kit. Basically, you have sort of the inner trunk of the exhaust, which you can see. Well, you can't see right now, I guess, because it's it's down in there. This kit is so damn big that maneuvering around the bench is interesting. Anyway, you've got the inside trunk where the flame holder and the fan and all that stuff fit in. Then you've got these outside pedals which connect to this ring piece, and the ring piece sort of clips onto that exhaust tunnel, and then this outer ring slides on top. And the outer ring actually fits a lot closer and more cleanly than I thought it would, even though I found that sanding the inside of it a bit with you know, just a piece of 400 grit, just kind of curved and whatnot, really did help matters quite a bit in terms of a nice snug fit. However, this ball join thing here means these are movable, but oh my god, it's it's not a it's not a uh, easy proposition at all. So once these things are cured, I'm going to adjust these a little bit and then just basically leave them be because yeah not easy to deal with i think if someone ever makes a good resin exhaust set for this kit it would definitely be worth considering even honestly if somebody just made resin exhaust pedals and just left this sort of outer ring in place and these things were their own piece that would be helpful because the inside it's like it's okay but it's it could be a lot better all right now we're going to fix the nose Hopefully this one already... ...seats in quite well. We don't have too much to worry about here. Voila! We have the nose attached. Alright, I'm going to set this bastard aside to set up for a bit and bring the Kitty Hawk into play. Now, with the Kitty Hawk kit, we're going to have to play this game a little bit differently, both up front and in the back. Why is that? Well, first of all, we're dealing with resin exhausts, so we can't use good old MEK. And there is really nothing in here because we chopped off the shit that lets you mount it to the bottom of the fuselage. We cut all that away. Come on. And so basically, we're left with a butt join. Now, thankfully, it's a pretty good butt joint for the most part here. So, that will help. We've got another one over here. Like so. Unlike the uh, Great Wall Kit, we're not really getting interference from this boom. You know, things seem to be kind of floating away on their own. But those will take super glue instead of MEK. And then up front here, we have what looks like some nice little openings and whatnot. Those are actually for the radar, not for the nose. The nose is just a piece of plastic. And then it basically fits like so. Now I will say the fit is nice. It's gonna be, well, nice-ish. I think we're going to have to prioritize whether we want the top to fit nicely or the bottom to fit nicely, and I'm going to obviously prioritize the top, because that's just the way of the world. 
but I think I'm going to deal with the engines first. So since we can't use MEK on resin, I'm going to be using my favorite super glue, Loctite's Ultra Gel Control stuff. Uh, this is nice and thick and holds well and behaves well. I'm just going to squeeze some out onto a piece of glass I've got over here. And then basically use a toothpick to ever so slightly place it along that butt joint. Then it will be a matter of installing this damn thing. I'm just going to hold it here for a moment. Accelerate in there to hasten the curing, and there we go. Now, let's go play with the nose. Now, one helpful guide for installing the nose onto both of these kits is this long center seam line here which seems like a mold seam that you're gonna have to clean up and all that kind of bullshit. But if you look at pictures of the real thing, it actually exists. It's a real chart of the nose. So we can use that to our advantage in terms of figuring out how to line all of this up, like so. Then a little bit of MEK, just right in there. Once we have that in place, come around the sides. Pick up the rest. Okay, now that the MEK has had a few moments to set up, here is the nose, which, considering it's a butt join and considering it's Kitty Hawk, I'm actually quite pleased with. It still could be better. Uh, don't feel like the profiles exactly match, though they come pretty close. There's a little bit of sort of a curve in on the lower portion of the nose in the radome where it meets the fuselage. And that's pretty much it. It would be nice though if instead of maybe a butt join, they actually had some sort of you know key system or something like that, similar to what the Great Wall Kit has, but they don't. Then the exhausts back here are okay. Um, they don't quite exactly match the curve, which is frustrating, but they're close. And I figure once all of this is painted up in various shades of metal, the slight difference will hopefully not be as noticeable. But yes, the engines are now installed and yay, everybody. So here we are with both aircraft, and I have to say of these two, I think that the Great Wall Kit comes out on top in terms of especially the niceness of the nose fit compared to what's going on over here with the butt join. You know, this one at least slots in nicely, fits nicely. As far as the engines go, um, both have their pain points, the resin ones. I feel like the resin exhausts aren't all that great. They've got a slight rough feel to them. They are also, I think, a little bit too small in diameter compared to the actual engine trunks or the engine humps that we've got going on back here. But they're easy to install because there's no interference from the boom and whatnot. If we look at the Great Wall Kit's engines, they are ambitious, I will say that, in terms of that ball joint idea and just the way that they're engineered and go together. They fit to the fuselage pretty well once you do some shaving of the boom here but they stick out with just a hair just you know like maybe 
two millimeters on the side. It's noticeable though, which is annoying. And I think is one of the things, as with the tails on the aft section of the aircraft that, in my opinion, hold it back from being as great as it could potentially be. That's not to say it's not a very good kit, but those are where the trouble areas are on it so far. So that is that. Um, in terms of engines, just to look on the inside for a brief moment, I think that the Great Wall kit is pretty nice. These interior pedals are maybe a bit overdone and there are a couple sections on them where the joins match up weird and throw things off a bit. I have tried where I can to hide those. You can see one up there. I put them in the very top because that's where you're not gonna see them quite as much. But other than that, these things are gorgeous on the inside. The Kitty Hawks engines, just to give a look down the trunk, are okay. Uh, the Thankfully, the split in the exhaust tunnel itself doesn't show all that much once these are installed. However, as you can see, the rim of the exhaust certainly shows with the resin parts kind of highlighting it. Also, these resin parts, even though they've been painted and you know given a little bit of weathering, are frustrating because I can swear they were probably 3D printed or something and you can literally see the whirls and whatnot inside the exhaust. It's like the, there is a palpable detail fall off and roughness that starts going on in there. So boo on that. Um, they're far better than the kit parts, but I do not think they're as good as the great wall parts. And again, the issue with the exhaust being, or the exhaust being slightly too small for the, for the shape of the engine humps is another knock against them. But since there's so much shit going on back here, uh, color and tone wise on the SU-35, my fingers are crossed that it will make all that big of a difference. So that is that for the engines and nose, and we will now go ahead and start thinking about part 12 of the never-ending flank-off.